Okay, Hassan, thank you for the introduction. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming. So, uh, my name is Dan Kelly. I'm going to talk about uh, experiential education today. And I think probably a lot of you know who I am and know my name, but probably most of you don't actually know very much about me at all. So, uh, let me give you a little bit of uh, background to, to what I'm going to talk about. I'm originally from Northwest Ohio. Finley, Ohio. I was uh, born and raised in Finley. I'm a first-generation college student, um, raised by a single mother, and I didn't really know what I wanted to be when I grew up as a kid. Um, I knew that going to college was a good idea, and I did well in school, and I found my way to Ohio State. And uh, I didn't really, I still didn't know what I wanted to do when I went to school, and I knew that I liked science, and I knew I was good at math, and I sort of bounced around and took different science classes, and um, eventually found a geology class, and I had a really good instructor. I really enjoyed the class, and I took another one, and then I just sort of kept doing that, um, and ended up with the full set of a bachelor's, master's, and PhD all from the same place, from the School of Earth Sciences at Ohio State. So I went until I couldn't take any more classes, basically. And, um, you know, taking a step back, you know, when I think about what really got me hooked and, and made me want to sort of be part of that world and keep learning and keep learning and keep learning, a lot of it was about the experiences that I had provided by the Department of Geology. And, and that starts um, with some, some really key uh, field trips I took. So in one of the first couple of semesters I was there as an undergrad, still sort of deciding to become a geology major, I was convinced and I tagged, or signed up for and went along on a spring break field trip to the Four Corners area, Grand Canyon area, Arizona. And it was awesome. Like I said, I'm from Northwest Ohio. Have you been to Northwest Ohio? It's very flat, extremely, exceedingly flat. And, um, and there's not a lot of geology to speak of. And as I was just starting to learn, I got this experience where I was seeing all of these striking landforms and having this great fun time with my friends and my professors and also learning at the same time and learning while I was engaged in this experience. And, uh, and, and I was hooked. And from then on, I did as much of that as I could. You know, as I was a student, I went on field trips to the, through the Northern Appalachians and the Southern Appalachians and um, oh, Ontario and Yellowstone and, and every, every chance I got um, in the local region as well, neighboring states and around Ohio. So I'm going to talk to you about experiential education today, and, and that's sort of my, my backdrop, is, is this, this sort of powerful effect of um, engaging in education. All right, just a little bit more with a bunch of logos about how I ended up here at Hawking College, and, and then I'll try not to talk about myself too much more. Um, I, like I said, I started at Ohio State. My first faculty position as a uh, geologist was at Louisiana State University, where I was the director of their geology field school. So I took students out to Colorado every summer for six or seven weeks and taught them geology. There's also not a lot of geology in South Louisiana, right? So we had to take them to the mountains to sort of seal their understanding. Um, after a few years doing that, I moved back to Northwest Ohio. I was an assistant and then associate professor of geology at Bowling Green State University and, um, and, and was there for six years. Along the way, I also taught a course at Denison University. Um, I spent four summers as a visiting instructor for Ohio State University. Um, teaching their geology field school, which is held in Utah every summer. Did that, that four years. And along the way, I also created and led this um, geology field school in Ecuador through South Dakota School of Mines. And, and so did that for, for six summers. So, um, and then, of course, there's, there's the Hawking College logo up there. 
So I started off, you know, as a geologist, as a PhD geologist, entering the faculty ranks, um, focused on research. There's some pictures of me looking at some volcanoes in Iceland and in Ecuador. Um, there are not a lot of volcanoes in Ohio, as you may be aware, and so studying this type of geology afforded me opportunity to go to a lot of really interesting and exciting places. But all along, as soon as I became a faculty member, as soon as I had any opportunity teaching, my, my main focus really was on getting my students into the field, getting them that experience that really sort of cemented and hooked learning for me. And so there's a bunch of photos going here, um, students in Colorado and, and Canada and Utah and so on. And there's just, there's just not really any um, substitute for this type of learning. That one's actually right in here on Ohio in the backyard of, of our campus. Um, you don't have to go to far and extravagant places to get this type of learning. But the point is that there's only so much you can do with a textbook. There's only so much you can do with PowerPoint slides and, and talking in classroom, even if you are a really great instructor and you have photos and animations and, and all the cool things that we have these days. There's no way to replicate the understanding of the scales and the variety of the natural world in particular. You're gonna understand my, my experience is biased here, right, toward, toward natural science. So, I spent a lot of time and effort doing this type of thing. I built a lot of programs and it, this all sort of peaked maybe in the summer of 2015. I led four um, groups, four field schools, for three different universities, on three different continents with 75 students and um, from a lot of universities all over the country participating in these programs and a lot of great fun, of course, and a lot of learning. So I want to take a little bit of a, a step back here and, and sort of put all of this exciting and interesting teaching and learning that I'm talking about into some pedagogical language and context. This is a model of experiential education, which shows a few things happening. Starting with abstract conceptualization, a student is learning an idea, a model, a theory. Moving into active experimentation, then into a concrete experience, to reflection and observation, and back around and round and round again. The thing that's really often missing from traditional education and classroom education is this concrete experience, engaging directly in an authentic situation. This is really what is powerful about education that includes experience. The experiences that I've been talking about as a geology instructor are taking students into the field and, and, and doing lots of mapping and, and observation and so on with geology, but this model applies to all of the different areas where all of you teach, where all of your, your career training is happening. A concept, active experimentation, a concrete, authentic experience, reflection on that experience, and, and applying the cycle back around again. The other thing I want to point out and fold in here is something that in, in teaching and learning literature and, and study, we refer to as the affective domain. Have, have any of you heard this term before, teachers out there? The affective domain of learning is referring to emotion, feelings, attitudes of the experiences that are happening while you're learning. We focus a lot on the content of what we're teaching and the best ways to communicate and illustrate and represent that content. But a really impactful and powerful aspect of the learning experience for our students is the emotional, the attitude, the feelings, what they're sort of experiencing while they're learning. You all know this, right? You've all felt this. You can all stop for 30 seconds here or something and think about in your own education, in your own training, your career, all of the things that have happened to, to get you where you are, of that experience, like the, the field trip to Arizona that I talked about at the beginning, which really got you hooked and got you passionate and got you participating with your peers and made you want to do more. You can see it in your mind's eye right now and you can feel it. You probably can't see and feel and remember 
any particular lecture where someone was really explaining the definitions of something well, right? It's not the same thing. That emotional aspect is, is key. It's critical to strong and meaningful and long-term learning. So with these ideas in mind, I just, um, I guess I'm gonna show one more example. I went a step further with these field schools that I was teaching in Ecuador and I partnered with a friend and colleague who is a faculty member at Escuela Politecnica in Quito, Ecuador. And we ran these field schools with both American students and Ecuadorian students learning together side by side. And, and um, this immersion into geology, immersion into beautiful and amazing landscapes and big volcanoes and also immersion into the culture of another country and then immersion and experience of interacting with your learning peers from another culture and country really um, made for powerful learning experiences. And it's not just powerful because I said so. We did a lot of um, follow-up qualitative and quantitative surveys and, and so on and, and demonstrated that the learning was stronger in this field course than in, in previous field courses where we didn't mix the students from, from the two countries. All just because of the feelings and the attitudes that, that we added into the same course. Uh, I did the same thing uh, over these same years with a number of groups in the Galapagos Islands, which is where all of these photos are from, which of course is a very special, unique, meaningful, one-of-a-kind type of place on Earth. And so I could teach the same thing in the classroom about volcanic features that I can there in the field in Galapagos, but of course the learning and the experience is quite a lot more impactful. And so there's another publication that came demonstrating that. Okay, so enough about the past. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna, my next sentence has the past. In 2018, I came to Hawking College to lead the School of Natural Resources. The reason I came here is because I knew about the reputation and the history and the strength of the college and of the School of Natural Resources, and that that strength, which was widely known around the state, the region, the country, is based on experiential education, hands-on learning, field-based learning, and, and turning out really qualified um, graduates. So I'm going to tell you some things you already know. For, for more than 50 years, Hawking College has been doing just that. And the graduates of the School of Natural Resources, again, I know I'm a little biased, are everywhere around the state of Ohio, across the country. The graduates of the rest of your programs, likewise, are out there working everywhere around the country, and they have a really well-known, strong reputation. When I talk to students that go to four-year universities, or when I talk to the instructors and the deans and the administrators of those programs at four-year universities, they all say that students that went to Hawking College know way more than the students who spent their first two years in the classroom at the, at the university. The reason for that is that they're doing everything with their hands. Look at all these photos that are, that are flashing by. They are engaging in novel situations every day. This creates problem solving, creative problem solvers. They're seeing something different every time that they're learning and every time that they're engaging in these exercises. This is not just fun, but this is also creating graduates in our technical fields who know what they're doing. The knowledge that they gain comes from having done it and having done it repeatedly and having done it different every time and, and, and encountering the problem solving the experience that's necessary to um, become proficient in their field, which is what we're after. I think there's Again, the, the type of education and experience and confidence and, and enculturation that our students walk away with cannot be achieved in the classroom. It is achieved by working with their partners, by experiencing their field of study, engaging with their instructors, and the passion and the experience of their instructors that, that really gives them the strength that they walk away with and really sets them out for career readiness, for readiness to go on to a four-year degree and, and to be leaders in their field. 
So I mentioned, and I apologize for more than half the room in here, that of course my, my own uh, collection of photos is pretty biased towards natural resources programs. Um, I, I don't want to sort of imply in any way that, that what I'm talking about applies to natural science and working in the field like, like actually walking out in, in the wilderness somewhere. Um, everything I've talked about, the, the experiential learning cycle, the affective domain, the teaching and learning that happens at Hawken College that, that provides our quality students is happening in all of your programs. I don't have to tell you that. Here's a, a collection of photos from students in all kinds of programs doing the thing that they're learning and learning while they're doing it. So I'll touch back on this just one more time. Uh, this, this active learning cycle, this experiential education cycle. And I want to emphasize and point out one more time this, this top part, this, this piece of the cycle, which is a concrete experience. And a concrete experience in which the learner is engaged directly in authentic situation. That's the part that, that we can do, that our, our programs and our faculty do with taking students into the settings that we take them into, our live learning labs, our experiential teaching. The other thing I want to point out is that this is a cycle and that this repeats and the learner grows as this goes on with time. So all of you, the faculty here in, in the programs of the college, are experts in most cases because of going through this cycle over and over and over again. You've had novel experiences. You've, you've, You've learned by doing, you've, you've come up with a new situation, you've solved a problem, and you've been lifelong learners. Your expertise is gained through experience. This also means that you're a special kind of teacher. You're a different kind of teacher because of, the ex because of understanding that expertise is gained through experience. Teaching and learning at Hawking College in our programs, in your programs, is powerful because you know how to create those authentic experiences, that missing part of the, the, the active learning cycle, the experiential education cycle. You know what authentic experiences mean. You're able to create practical projects and, feel, and, and authentic field settings. And we've got a lot of learning labs where we're creating what is the true um, situation that we're putting our students into in their careers. I really want to emphasize this. You all are the reason why the, the college is as strong as it is and our programs are as strong as they are and that our students are coming out as strong as they are. You all have expertise because of years of experience. There are other people out there in the world who also have expertise in their fields because of years of experience, but you all also have passion for teaching. This isn't, this isn't the prettiest work, right? This is hard work. And, and that expertise combined with that passion for passing on that knowledge and, and training and educating your students is, is special. And um, the college is strong because of all of you. The programs are strong because of all of you. There's really only two parts that are necessary to have a college, right? Is students. And, and teachers. That's the sort of the most bare bones version of what's happening at the college. All the rest of us are here to support and facilitate and make that happen. And, um, and, and you all are doing great things. You should all be, you should all have a lot of pride in the programs that we have here at the college. It's all very impressive work. And um, I think I'll stop there and thank you all.